Hi, this is Howard from Base Sound, and we provide live sound engineering training. I thought I'd make this video just to show you how to set up a two-way sound system with the digital crossover. So I'm just going to zoom in on the system at the moment. You can see that I've got two bass bins. Uh, these are 15-inch bass bins and two 12-inch mid-high boxes. Uh, the 15-inch bins are wired to this bottom amp here and uh, the tops to the other one. Above that, I've got the DBX drive rack PA speaker management system, which to you and I is a digital crossover. Uh, called speaker management system because you can do so much more than just crossing over the frequencies. You can uh, obviously do that, but you can also EQ the whole system uh, with the internal parametric and graphic equalizers. Um, you've got limiters built in. You've got other things such as uh, where you can connect up a real-time analyzer mic and it can um, EQ the room to, uh, or should I say EQ the sound system to suit the room that you're in. I'm going to run through some of the, you know, the sort of basic settings, but the main thing is setting up the crossover itself. Um, and then above that, I've got the patch panel. Now, the patch panel is simply just an easier way to connect in and out of this rack. Um, I've got my two inputs here um, going into the crossover. So these are coming from my mixer into this panel, which around the back of it, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, goes into the, uh, the two inputs of the crossover. Um, on the top here are my four speaker outputs. You can see how they're labeled, bass left, bass right, top left, and top right. So if I go around the back of the rack, you will see a complete jumble of cables. There is some uh, logic to all this, so let me work you through it. Um, so we've got the, the, uh, the mains cable here with the strip plug there just to the side. Um, now, I'm going to just move my hands around a bit. At the top here, you've got the patch panel. Um, and that's, as I say, you've got the ins and outs uh, connected to it. So if we, for example, take these two inputs here, you can probably... These two cables here are the ones that go into the crossover. Uh, so that's the left and right of the crossover. Now, the crossover itself has actually, I'm going to try and move some of these cables so you can see a bit better, has actually got six outputs. Let's hold that camera still. It's got two base, two mid, and two high. And as you can see, nothing's connected to the mid because mine is a two-way system. So I've set this up as the two base bins are connected from here. Those two leads go into the bottom amplifier, two XLR ins there. And those two high outputs go into this amplifier. Um, so... If I was running a three-way system, I would have another amplifier and we would set the mode of the, uh, the crossover to three-way mode. It's set just to two-way mode at the moment. Also on the back here, you can see my speaker outputs. Now, obviously, much chunkier cable. Uh, simple rule with uh, speaker cable. The thicker the copper, the easier it is to get current to those speakers and uh, more power and more volume. So these are thick two core four mil speaker cables. So I've got the, uh, the same cables coming out here and they actually don't go direct to the speaker, they go to the patch panel. So they're all sort of internally wired to the patch panel. I mean, the cables are strapped up the top there. It's just so that when I'm actually connecting this rig up, it's just so much easier than coming out here. Okay, so here we are around the, uh, the front of the rack, and I'm just going to quickly show you some of the, uh, the settings that you've got. So, for example, if we start here under preset, if I just push that, you will see that I'm scrolling through various presets. And in fact, the one I use for this system says X12 S15. Uh, because that's the, uh, the Martin audio system I've got. But uh, let's just forget that for a minute. I'm going to actually show you how you set up a different one. So if, for example, if I scroll through here, this one says two-way stereo sub. To be honest, a lot of people run the sub in mono anyway um, because actually if you have stereo sub, it can sort of cause more problems. 
and these big festivals, if ever you go to them, you'll see that you'll have these clusters of speakers either side of the stage, and actually the subs are in one great long line under the stage, so it's, it's mono. But for just this demonstration, I'm going to show you a two-way system with stereo sub. So there you go. I do that, and if I push this button here, I've just recalled it, and hopefully it should boot up. There we go. So it's um, a two-way stereo sub. It hasn't got any name yet. We could name this as when we finish programming it. And over here, you can see the various buttons. So you've got, for example, graphic equalizer. On this screen, it's turned off at the moment. But for example, I could turn it on. I could then go to quick curve. And there's some in preset curves. My band, that one's called speech, where they've obviously cut the bass and boosted some of the top. Uh, performance again that looks like a bit of the sort of higher bass uh, and some of the highs cut DJ where they've obviously enhanced the bass enhanced the top cut some of the low mid these are just preset ones or if I scroll through there's, yeah, there's flat so and then for example I could uh, now do it myself so there's 20 hertz selected I could start boosting 20 hertz if I wanted to. Uh, and then I could just, I'm just gonna quickly show you, go through, it goes through all the frequencies. You can see the frequencies changing underneath it. So I could go to 31 hertz and I could boost that. I'm not, you know, I'm just showing you here what you can do. So you could, using, I mean, to be honest, I think it's easier if you use a normal graphic equalizer with your sound system, if I'm honest, um, get it sounding really good and then actually just copy the settings that you've created into this, because this is a little fiddly to use, but I'm gonna put it back to flat, um, but it's just really showing you how you do it. Let's go back to the 20 hertz, and put that one back to flat as well. Okay. So there's a, a graphic equalizer built in, which is, is great. Um, then we're gonna go on to some of the other settings. So let's go back. Uh, let's go now to, you've got uh, this one called AFS, Automatic Feedback Suppressor. Again, uh, I've got it turned off. Um, it's actually pretty good. If um, you, you want something to react to any frequencies that are peaking, this can do that. Uh, you've got something over here called Subharmonic Synth, if you're doing... Uh, music with a lot of bass energy and you want to add some extra low end harmonics, this can do it. But let's go, again, I've turned that off. I'm not too interested at the moment. I'm just gonna go into the crossover mode, which is, if you like, the most important one because I've got bins and tops here. So if I push that, you will see a picture of a crossover. Um, because, uh, called it because you set the point at which the sound goes to each particular box. So this, this one over here is the bass, and that one is the high speaker, and there's a crossover point. So for example, if I were to first of all set the high band menu, if I click on this, you can see I can set the crossover point for the high frequency. Now these boxes I've got are 12s, uh, 12 inch mid drivers and a horn. And to be honest, they'll go down comfortably to about 55, 60 hertz. When you're using them with bass bins, um, it's normal to sort of raise that point so that the bass is going typically up to about 125, 150 hertz. If they're big, th that's with 15 inch bass bins. If you've got 18 inch bass bins, you might make them go a little lower, say up to sort of 90, 100. Um, I'm just going to show you a demonstration though with this. So actually what I'm going to do is go back um, and I'm going to show you the low frequency one first. So that's highlighted now. And you can see there's a bit of a curve down. Um, and our, the reason being is because they've actually got the... They, well, let's click on it and have a look. But you'll see, yeah, they've set a high pass filter at 35 hertz. So in other words, at 35 hertz they're beginning to roll the sound off that way. So let's put that to flat for now, just to show you what. So if I were to 
go back. There you go. It's now the bass is starting, if you like, from the very lowest frequency. I mean, the ba bins I've got here only start go up to about, um, sorry, drop down to about 35 hertz, 33 hertz. So, but just to show you, you know, setting up the crossover as a demonstration. And I, as you can see here, um, it's, uh, I've taken the high pass fr uh, frequency out. So that, that high pass frequency type is irrelevant. If I carry on scrolling down, I want to show you this slope. Again, again, I could boost the volume of the bass just to show you. There you go. You can see it shifting up there. If you want to, if you're doing sort of dance music or something, and you want to set your bass always louder than the highs, I'll put it back to flat. So let's go back to zero. And what I'm going to do is show you this with pink noise in a minute. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is the low pass frequency. That's this slope here. And at the moment, it's set to 100 hertz. Okay. So I'm actually going to make it go all the way along to the beginning of the spectrum, play some pink noise and bring it in, and you'll hear the bin starting to reproduce the, uh, the sound coming through it. So if I, for example, keep that low pass frequency, and now you'll see, as I turn this down, literally it's, it's rolling off the crossover slope from 16 hertz. Uh, it's, it's filtering the the bass out. So firstly, I'm going to unmute the bass outputs. And that's pink noise coming through the system. And although my speakers only go down to about 35 hertz, 33 hertz, and that says 16, it is a slope. So saying it's 16 hertz, they're, they're rolling off the bass, but probably there's still some coming through up here. If I start scrolling that frequency up, you'll hear a lot more coming through. So that's the pink noise coming through, and I'm going to take it up, keep going, and you'll start to hear the bins getting more of the high energy coming through, but obviously it won't sound great because they are bass bins. So you get the idea. Now the bin isn't necessarily getting louder when you go up here, it's, it's bringing more content through. So I would typically take these bins down to about 125 hertz. If you buy a, a, a system, a, a manufacturer system, they normally guide you as to what to set the crossover with anyway. So I'm going to set this to about 125, just to show you. There we go. And I'm also then going to show you the different slopes. So if we scroll down, you can see this slope is a Linksworth Riley, or Linksworth Riley, at 12 decibels per octave. So at 125 hertz, if we go an octave above 125 hertz, that's 250 hertz, it's reduced the bass by 12 decibels, which is a very gentle slope. So let's change that slope and you'll hear the bass become more tighter sounding. There we go, so that's 24 decibels. So by 250 hertz, it's reduced the volume of the bass by 24 and then if I go again 36 48 that's it that's you can hear quite a difference and if I go back through you can hear the different ones um, what is right is what sounds that's six decibels that's that's pretty awful <laughs> I'm gonna go back to 24 is really nice really deep sound coming through the subs there. Um, so let's just leave it at that for now. And then if I go, let's just see what other options they give me. Polarity, this is on normal polarity. It says normal here. You can invert the phase or keep it on normal. Switching between the two right now is not really showing any difference. Um, all it does, it puts the signal 180 degrees out of phase. This was something quite common on um, sort of the old analog compressors, uh, compressors, old analog crossovers. But, uh, on digital ones, I really wouldn't bother doing that unless your bins are completely out of phase with each other. Um, I would leave it on normal. Um, 
it's sometimes it can help if they're if they're not actually next to each other one's much more further forward than the other but even so if that's the case you should be time aligning them properly um, in milliseconds so let's see what other settings they give us that's it so I'm gonna go back out of here and then we're gonna do the high menu okay so I'm gonna turn the bass amp off a minute and I'm gonna bring the high one in so let's unmute those and bring the high one in and you can hear that's coming through very easily the high pass frequency is 100 Hertz so it's although it's going up to 125 on the bass there is a bit of an overlap and you'll see if I lower that frequency it'll sound deeper as more of the bass is coming through the high boxes a little deeper and if I keep going all the way up they're getting very tinny sounding um, so again probably having the bins go up to 125 you might make the tops exactly the same you might drop a little bit if in case between that crossover point, the sound is a little, a little weak. You might want to um, overlap the crossover points a bit more. So I'm going to go back down to about 120. There we go. And again, we can play around with the slope. So if I... You can hear the sound changing as we change the slope. I might go for a 24 dB there. I've got the option to boost the volume. Not that I want to, but I'll just show it to you. And it's getting louder. And turn it down again. see what other settings they give us the low pass frequency yeah I mean if you've got top boxes that only go up to 16k then again you could roll off some of the sound from there I'll just demonstrate it I haven't I've got mine going all the way to the end of the spectrum at 20k but again let's show you that you can see I'm now rolling off some of the very high top it sounds awful but just showing you you can do it uh, if you really want to you might set that to something like 16 18k if you think your tops really are not producing anything above that i'm going to go to flat although to be honest above 15k i doubt there's much difference and that's out Again, we've got the polarity, and that's pretty much the crossover settings. So you've also got this uh, EQ, PEQ, parametric EQ. So I push that. That allows you to EQ either the bins or the tops uh, with multiband parametric EQ. So let's, we've got, if I scroll through it, just to show you what they give you. So it's called Auto EQ. I've turned it on um, and there are eight bands and each band is a bell type of BQ. Well, you can probably change that actually. Yeah, high shelf, but let's stick with bell EQ. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate this with the pink noise just to show you that you could EQ each. So once you've got the right crossover point for your bins and your tops to fine tune the sound again, um, you could spend some time with this and get it really uh, sounding as good as you can. So if I go to this frequency here, 778 hertz, let's just scroll that up a bit to say th three and a half, three and a bit K. If I bring the pink noise in and then I apply this EQ that's flat at the moment, I'm gonna sh show you as I cut it. So here's the pink noise again. And I'm going to uh, start turning it down it's down a little bit 
there you go you can hear I'm completely changing the tone of the mid high speakers by taking all that top end out it sounds ridiculous but it's purely a demonstration um, you'll see that's quite a wide curve there will be on this band yeah something called Q where you can alter the width of that curve just to show you again so I'm gonna and it gets narrower you could be more precise with your frequencies again if I go wider you can hear it having a, a huge effect um, so all of this is for you to optimize the sound of your speakers if I turn the uh, go back here uh, where are we now go back to the gain and put that back to zero you'll see we're getting the pink noise coming back through and I'll just turn that down again so you've got eight bands of EQ to uh, uh, to play with for each of the, uh, the the tops and the bins and then you've got something called delay uh, now this is the proper way to set up your speakers so if the bins for example are set further back than the tops um, you can delay the tops so the bins are in sync or vice versa if the bins are ahead of the tops you can uh, delay the sound of the subs so the tops can catch up um, and you can do that in milliseconds with the delay uh, and yeah that's a bit of and we've also got so you've got the real-time analyzer that works for uh, in conjunction with the real-time analyzer mic input which is to the side of the screen um, and then you've got a limiter here which allows you to completely restrict um, the level leaving this crossover going to the amp so you know if you are a rental renting your equipment out to to different uh, people to use you might set the system up so that it will go very loud but actually put a limiter on as a maximum uh, volume you wish the system to run at so um, yeah here, there's an overview of this crossover <laughs>